was it like knowing that Matt Hancock is in your TV program? You must have been rubbing your hands, all of you nudging each other. I'm like, pretty like, apolitical, to be yeah. fair. But yeah, of course. It's like, <laughs> you know, like, you know like, yeah, but hold on a minute. Was there an operation that springs out in your mind? The one that really sticks out in my mind was towards the end of my career. Bullets flying all over the place. One of the lads got shot and killed immediately. Dived into a ditch to sort of square myself away, overwhelmed with fear and thinking, what the fuck is this all about? That trip away, that tour, it was the final nail in the coffin for my mental health. Tell me about the opportunity that arose for you when you went out and saw the drug cartels in South America. In Mexico, but that place is Madness. Scary. There was a torso on the floor with no head, arms or legs, and there was a bag next to it. The copper emptied the bag and everything that was missing rolled out. It must have been a point where you're not carrying anything. You know they're going to be carrying. Did you get the fear at all? We got sketchy in Mexico. We had a hit put out on us. And then as that was all playing out, so everyone's on edge anyway. There's f police and yeah. military there. The cartel, they don't give a yeah. shit. And they, they're crazy. Mm. Foxy, welcome to the show, mate. Thanks for having me in Dodge. Yeah. Um, eventually found the place. That's eventually what, got here, actually. Eventually got here. We've been talking about this for a while, haven't we? Yeah, we went to... Um, we basically went to the rugby, didn't we? That's where we first met. That's right. Remember with That's um, right. Mac. Stevie Mac and Staz. Yeah. England rugby. They had a, uh, they had a box there and got invited. That was it, a good day, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a good day. That was... Uh, it was off the back end of the pandemic. It must have been a couple of years ago. Yeah, now. a couple of years and since then we've been saying yeah let's do it I'm a final year yeah quality I've run out of excuses <laughs> <laughs> I've run out of excuses excuses got me. no I'm only joking I'm joking no it's good to be let's, here let's uh, mate really looking forward to this and uh, there's some funny moments on that day we sort of, we've got to start having a few beers it's like being at a wedding you know they go on glass of champagne oh, mm, oh go on then glass of wine yeah go on then be it good before you know it's like okay, okay. Yeah. anything else i was i went along and thought oh, i'm not really going to drink Same. today and it was a load of that no, was just a load of it was just a waste of time on my part yeah. i burnt a lot of energy thinking to myself i'm not going to drink and then fucking got shy yeah it's got yeah, yeah so <laughs> good day yeah it was good, good day on day. the smash at rugby england i can't remember it was england wales or something it's basically me you and Stas with a load of old people when that's right <laughs> Do they listen? Do they, do they I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Cracking day. Anyway, hi guys, just give me the quick heads up. We've just launched a new VIP membership on Patreon. This gives you exclusive episodes, behind the scenes footage never seen before, VIP community chat, and early access to all episodes. If you love what we do, for the sake of a cheeky pint a month, fiver a month, come and support the channel. It allows us to grow even bigger. Folks, let's roll all the way back. Where did you grow up and how did you get into the SBS Special Ooh. Forces and then become a TV celebrity? Jesus, that's a that's a massive question. <laughs> well, I was born so I was born in Plymouth originally. Originally. I was born in Plymouth <laughs> at the end. It was not well originally. Well, I, my I, second I got time. born again. <laughs> originally Plymouth first. That's because my old man and my old dear yeah. were in the military down mm. there. My dad was a marine. My mum was in the Navy um, and then bounced around after I was born. I was ill, actually, when I was born. I was born premature, but moved around a bit. And we ended up, we went to Basingstoke. That's where my brother was born. Mm. I, had, did, did I, had a, have... I had a decent upbringing. My dad's great. My mum's good. Mm. Both of them are great. <laughs> my dad's great. My mum's good. They're both great. Like... <laughs> They're both great. Um and your old man was he? Was he? Was he your hero? Was he a mentor? Was he? A, did he guide you in any way? He, I look up to him. He's always been. Um, he's very. He brought me and my brother up, and me up brothers. The other brother came along a little bit later. He's got. A, he's got an affiliation with Bournemouth. You'll probably know my brother. Go on, Jamie Fox. He used to. He ran Bliss. Yeah, uh, he worked. He worked for. He basically ran Clute and. Okay. All that he worked for Izzy. Okay, Izzy and Bronson. Yeah, yeah, because he knows he knew them. He was gonna, he ran the he ran the dancing duck and all that okay. sort of stuff. Yeah. No, yeah, we'd know yeah, each other. Know yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. I mean, my old man brought us up. Well, got us into outdoors, got us into fitness, all that sort of stuff. We didn't, you know, we it wasn't a privileged upbringing by a fucking long shot, not living in Luton, but he 
done well with us. And uh, I've always looked up to him. He's quite a perfectionist. He always strives and puts 110% yeah. into whatever he's doing, whether he was working or playing sport or whatever. Mm. Where, where, where were you when you first got triggered to say, you know what, I want to get out of this lifestyle now and I want to go and join the Marines? So I was, I was at school, like completely, I like my GCSEs were a write-off. <clears throat> I knew they were going to be a write-off. And then I also, towards the end of school, me, me a couple of lads and a three girls, we bunked off towards, you know, we were 15. I remember bunking off and we ended up getting absolutely, we had a place everywhere as a wreck, done mm, it? Yeah. Nicked a load of booze from our parents' places. The only stuff I could get hold of was a litre bottle of Bacardi that I stole off my old man. We ended up going around the, this little hill around the back of the wreck, can, drinking cans of Diamond White or whatever it was, and smoking <laughs> yeah. cigarettes. Yeah. And then when we ran out of all the cider, I pulled out the bottle of Bacardi and ended up just finishing it on my own and got absolutely... I ended up crawling back to school, to the class I was supposed to be in, absolutely shedded and anyway long story short I wasn't allowed back to school again mm. just because it was a yeah I uh, I turned up I think I was running around the school naked at one point there was all sorts of fucking shenanigans <laughs> I got driven home by the fucking head teacher was it my mum yeah my mum was like what the fuck <laughs> my old man I, I think I ended up getting my stomach fucking pumped out pumped and yeah. my, my old man was fuming because he'd lost a bottle of Bacardi he didn't care that I was in a shit state he was like you owe me a bottle of Bacardi <laughs> Still tells me it to today. Like, ah, you owe me a bottle of Bacardi. But, um, yeah, so because of all that, I was like, I'm, I've got to do something here. Mm. And my dad had obviously told us stories about the Marines, and I was like, right, if I'm going to join the military, which is the only option as far as I was concerned, mm. I'll join the Marines. So did all the applications, went to the careers office up in Luton, just not far from the football ground. Yeah, and um, yeah, then left home, sixteen. Sixteen, you joined. Yeah, did you? Sixteen. And what about and um, what about moving on then? So actually, in selection, what was selection like for you at that time? What did you have to do? Did you have to do the the, the hills in uh, Wales and then go out yeah. to the jungle? Yeah, do all that. Yeah. I, I, what, was, um, what was the most difficult of the two? The they're both difficult for different reasons. Like the hills is about seeing if you've got the motivation. Yeah, because no one does. No one gives a shit if you go. No one, no one cares. There's so many blokes, and you got to get up every morning, get your kit on. It's raining outside. You fucking, you'll see blokes like that. Ah, fuck that. Well, I can't be asked. Yeah. And they'll, but then you've also got to be able to navigate. That's the first test, and then you've got to be a bit robust to withstand doing running over hills all the time and carrying weight. If you pick up a niggling injury, what does that do to your headspace? Because niggling injuries play on your yeah. mind. Can you push through that? Does it become a bigger injury? Are you prone to injury anyway? Which means you're going to be fucked. You know, it's like mm. playing sport. Yeah. If you know, you get all these amazing people who are talented, but you find that some of them are, are injury prone. Do you know what I mean? Like, mm. just whatever. So there's a bit of that. That's what the first one is. Uh, the second, the, the the jungle. You, you know, like you mentioned, that's more. That's about being happy with being uncomfortable mm. and. Also, yeah, you've got to be, obviously, you've got to be good with regard to skill and, you know, you've got to be tactically aware, but, you know, most soldiers should be. But a lot of it is about being constantly under the microscope. So you're being watched and listened to all the time. You don't know when they're not listening. Okay. So you'll be fucking sat chatting to you like in an evening when you go back to your hammock space before you get your head down, you'll be fucking cooking your fucking dinner mm. like a bag of fucking corned beef hash or whatever you'll be chatting to the lads you know the guys that are in your patrol your team whatever you want to call them about anything and because you know you're on a course yeah. you'll be moaning about a couple of the other blokes yeah. you'll be fucking slagging off one of the DS because he's bollocked you or something and then as you're fucking chatting that DS will probably pop out from behind a bush like that you alright lads you like that oh, yeah and yeah. He, then he just interesting conversation then walks off oh, and you're okay. like oh, fuck yeah. what were we saying what did Just, you reckon he heard when we called him a dick and like all yeah, this yeah, and it's yeah, like yeah. oh my god yeah. it's like and then because people do that some people are like fuck it I've failed I'll yeah. take myself off but actually he probably was only there for two for seconds a couple of seconds yeah, yeah. yeah who knows yeah. But there must be a lot of mind games going on in there are I they think play? the mind games they don't, they don't need to play them they, they just naturally occur okay 
you'll do, you'll you'll make a mistake on something, you'll get a bollocking, and it will play on your mind. But the, I think realistically, they just want to see you come back from that and go again. Mm. But the the mind, they're not. It's not a conscious thing where they're like, let's fuck them up. Yeah, they don't need to. The jungle does that to you anyway. Just living in that environment. Are they so screaming you, and shouting at you like they do on the TV program or nah, not? No, okay, okay. Nah, that's the thing. That's okay. <laughs> that's the well, bit that I find hard with the TV program. Yeah. Like literally, it's like. Shout, shout at them coming up the hill. I'm like, I couldn't give a fuck, fuck. if they... I'm like that. Oh, yeah, bastards. And really, I'm like, ah, fucking stay down there if you want. I'll fucking mug you off. <laughs> <laughs> because they never, yeah. they never really... Unless... Yeah. You know, don't get me wrong. If someone does something ridiculous... And they don't shout. Mm. There's that. Right, if that's what you want to do, you can fuck, right, start banging out press-ups. Yeah. We'll take you for a beach run. Yeah. And you're like that. Oh, because man. they don't get angry like that. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. How, long, how many people can you remember that went on that selection and how many people actually passed, roughly? So my, ours was quite a big one. They went through a phase of loading it up. We, I'm sure it was around 350 blokes. Huge course. Um, And at the end, eight, eight. maybe. I can never remember how many okay. we actually... But it was less than 10. Wow. wow. More than... Six. Wow. So let's go for eight. Could call have been it, nine. Call it eight. <laughs> I've forgotten. So, it's uh, <laughs> my Who was on it? I, do you know what? I went to one of my I'm jumping ahead, but yeah. I went to one of my gigs the other day. Yeah. It was in Dudley. Dudley. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I come out the back and this two guys come up to me. Yeah, mate, how's it going? And one of them was that, pointing at this bloke. I'm like, you're all right. So he fucking pointed the bloke for him. Then I looked at the bloke. I was like, fuck me, I was on selection. We put, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah he went, we went two different ways. Yeah, 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 he yeah. went up the road. And, I mean, yeah, I was like, hey, man, that's okay. I ain't seen him since selection. Like, fucking 20 or 20, what 20 year, years what year ago. What year did you get selected? Went on 2002. 02. And what's that feeling like once you've been selected? You actually, they, they come back. 02, 03, yeah. And, yeah Are you on it. some sort of parade? How does it work? Or is it just done? Well, well you done. Finish. You're selected. Well done. You're in. Off you go. Right, you just you get to the end of the course. Well, you get to a certain point, they're like, you, you know, you're gonna pass unless you fucking make an absolute yeah. hash of yeah. something, and then you have a badging day where you just, you, you know, there's a, there's eight of you. Yeah, you're like, well done, shake your hand, good effort, and you're like, you, you're all excited, and then you, you're like, all oh, right, is that it? And you're like, you yeah. all. Because you're like, oh, fuck you, we're the dog's bollocks with past selection. Then you go, then then you go and join a squadron and <laughs> you come back down to earth with a fucking Reality. almighty crash. Where did you go? So when you passed selection, what was the movement like? Did you move to a different area? Or did you go straight into Paul? No, I came to Paul. Straight into Paul. Yeah. Mrs. was already here. Yeah. So the first one, what's that one? First one. First one. <laughs> met her down here. Yeah. Uh, so we came came down here, yeah. Got a got a uh, we get a married quarter. Yeah, got a married quarter. Which means, what's that, a house on campus? A house, a house not on At camp. Just, okay. Yeah. The army do houses on camp. Okay. As fortunately, as just off camp. Just off, okay. You could see the wire. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it might as well have been on camp. <laughs> what was it? What was day-to-day -day like for you in the special boat service? Uh, it depends. It's like hectic. Never at home. Even, even when you're not away, you're away doing training training different roles and commitments and yeah you're very rarely in your own bed uh really? if you are on if you are at home home you'd be you know doing all your, you you get like every now and again you get something called kit husbandry weeks where you get to you know clean your weapons make sure your kit's in good order okay and all that sort of mm. stuff you know that what people would consider mundane yeah but you know Get around the, you know, you have vehicles that you have to, you're responsible for. So you, you know, are you waiting on a pager? Have you got a pager or a mobile phone or something pings to go like something's we, an operation that needs to be done? We used to yeah. at certain periods, you'd have a pager. I think I'm sure, but I mean, Don't it's been a while exist, since I left. Yeah, yeah. To, to, I mean, I'd be fucking surprised if they've got pagers. Mm. Like the, the enemy mm. don't need to worry if we've got pagers. Yeah. <laughs> we're lying on pages. <laughs> hopefully, we, hopefully, everything's <laughs> done by phone. What was the What was the first operation you went to? The first tour you went on? Uh, my one was uh, that it will be that nine month for to Afghan. And what was that like? Exciting. What year was it? Oh, oh three was it? Oh four. Oh four. Was it? Okay. Oh four. Oh five. Into that. Yeah, that period. What was the feeling like knowing you built up, you've passed, you're now in the special forces, and now you've been flown into Afghan with like a a bunch of your mates all looking after each other? Yeah, I mean it was 
I was excited. I was fucking. Remember flying in, looking out the window of the aircraft, thinking, seeing all the mountains. I was like, ooh. Um, excited, apprehensive, um, unsure. Didn't know what it would, what it was going to be like. Didn't know what I was going to be like. And yeah, it was. It was yeah. I mean, it was everything I wanted it to be. It was fucking exciting. We were working with like local, you know, troops, forces, and going out on the ground and just doing what I wanted to do. Mm. But for real, it was really exciting. Yeah. Did you? Did you work alongside a good mate of our stairs? Through that. Yeah, not at the beginning. Yeah. That was. Uh, so I remember I went out on one one um one of our trips and we would take our. The group that I was in, we were taken over from the group that he was in. That was the first time I met him. Yeah. And I actually I actually remember it quite vividly. There was there was he on his trip he ended up uh getting into a had a training partner that I was good mates with. Mm. So I fucking come out and I'm like, Hey up mate, and he's like, Yeah, we'll go down. So I the first thing I did with Stars was go on a go down the gym and fucking throw some tin yeah. around. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so that was yeah. Was there an operation that springs out in your mind where you were like, you know what, it's either them or us, or I could be really close to losing my life here? Well, there was a lot of those, but um, the one that the one that really, I'm not giving too much away, the one that really sticks out in my mind was towards the end of my career when we, I mean, I've spoke about it before, but we come off, ran off the back of a helicopter. There's a few, like, groups, couple, numerous helicopters, ran off the back of the helicopter. One of the lads got, from another heli, from another team, got shot and killed immediately. We're in, like, there's bullets flying all over the place. I'm running towards the, you know, where we're heading, a group of buildings, fucking, in the, in the zone, dived into a ditch to sort of square myself away, and then was just suddenly fucking overwhelmed with fear and thinking what the fuck is this all about and the weird thing is it's been in situations like it before but for some reason it was on that it was in that moment that that fear had gotten a grip of me and I had to get myself out of it and I obviously did but it really had an impact on me and I don't know why it was then I, I, I don't know why didn't it happen before on all the other trips that I'd done out to that part of the world and all the other times that we'd been in dangerous situations, but I, it it springs out. I don't know whether it's because we'd heard that someone had been killed, so there was a lot yeah. of emotion running around, and I was still struggling with trying to work out in my mind who it might be. I kept thinking it was one of the lads that I'd be got close to, and oh, so you didn't know? No, no, we just oh. heard that there was a guy at KIA killed in action. Yeah, and you're still getting you're we we'd only just. We were still, we still had a job to do, and it's like fucking hell. Have we bitten off more than we can yeah. chew here? Which we sort of maybe had, but we squared it away in the end. But it was, yeah, I was like, I went through a wave of emotions on that evening. I remember thinking about my daughter, who was young, who I hadn't really put a lot of time and effort into. If I'm being brutally honest, yeah. I hadn't hadn't been as present as I should have been. But that's because I was in a career that I loved. And then all of a sudden, I'm in the thick of it. It's funny. I went through two things. I went through the, f I went through a moment where I was thinking about my mum. As much as I love my mum, she fucking talks for Britain, and so can 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 potentially do my head in at yeah, times. Yeah. And then the next thing, I'm talk, thinking about my daughter, and I'm like, I shouldn't be thinking about this shit. I'm supposed to be a professional soldier, but it was just a natural mm. thing. But then, I think that that trip away, that tour was the um it was the final nail in the coffin for my mental health it just it was an accumulation of stuff there was a lot of stresses and my home life was falling apart wow. and i think that trying me trying to juggle it all was too much for my brain mm. and i ended up fucking coming back from that feeling different didn't really i hadn't come home to a home i'd come home to a very fractious environment because mm. you know me and the missus had, were, weren't together i had like fucking relationships all over the place i was going on the piss a lot downtown it's awesome aruba yeah, aruba, great. yeah mate, Friday, great. Saturday night. yeah absolutely. Still you're still going oh, mate, yeah fucking <laughs> hell, is it still popular <laughs> yeah is it decent yeah it's good mate oh mate, good yeah, mate of mine a... owns it, andy price oh right, i had yeah. a great time in there yeah yeah, yeah fucking loved some it. great places go on the piss down here is it still going yeah 
Yeah. 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 I used to, yeah, mate, I was coming home and just. Just going straight out. Yeah. What, what year, what year was this when you realized that you, on that tour, you had the fear and everything else going on with your mum and your daughter and. 2010. 2010. Yeah. On that tour there, what, what did you actually, on that tour, and you're talking about being in the ditch, squaring yourself off and had to get rid of a few people. What was that about? Do you remember what that mission was? Um, it's just, a, just, a, just another mission. Just another one. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Just another. They all, they all fucking made. To be fair, they. When I think back on it, I get, I get a lot of things mixed up. I have to sit down and concentrate if I want to. Yeah. Not that I ever want to, but they all blend into one. Mm. I don't know whether anyone else thinks the same. I think, mate. I speak to a couple of mates, and I think they do. But yeah, it all. For me, it's all blended into one, and obviously, having gone through. After, so post that tour and then you know over a very slow period and then quickly going into my bout of mental health it's turned yeah. everything into a fucking blur into a blur that's it okay yeah. interesting so I can I can pick out things that have gone on and happened but I can't fucking I'm like ah, did that happen at the same time as that was it on the same tour was it yeah it's really yeah it's difficult yeah. difficult to try and Piece it all together. Yeah. Do you remember how many tours you've been on? How many Afghans? How many Iraqs? I'd have to sit down and think properly. Roughly, like but an Iraq Afghan. But Iraq I didn't go to anyway. You didn't go? No, it was all So just all purely Afghan, was yeah, it? Yeah, for me. What, three, four times? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah it was more, yeah, yeah. Multiple. How, how, do you, how do you know when someone is a Taliban or just a farmer? Well, you don't, unless he's got a gun. But even then... You know, it's all fucking. That was that was the difficulty of that of that era. I think mm. the environment was very difficult to. There wasn't. It wasn't as. It wasn't like a. What people would class as a conventional war or conflict because there wasn't. It's not. There's not a state with an army that have got yeah. a, a, a specific uniform. Yeah, and I don't think. I don't think people, I don't think it's done that way anymore anyway. Mm. It would be, you know, I'm sure, yeah, there is, there's issued kit and there's kit that you can say is attributed to mm. certain states and their armies and their, you know, yeah. their, their fighting forces. But then it wasn't, it was, it was very much a, an unknown. You're going into an area and you just don't know who's the that enemy. Be, that must be weird. Not knowing, I've got. They know who you are. Yeah, you I haven't got a clue if that's a farmer or it's a farmer's kid or that's a Taliban with a gun hidden underneath his. Yeah, it was. I think it was it weird. Maybe it was weird, but and then you get used to it and you're yeah. like, okay, this is what it is. We're in, you've, we've got to be very methodical and careful about what we do because mm. otherwise we'll end up having a negative impact. I was yeah. very, very aware of what we were up to and made sure that it was. I was diligent with what my head was where my, my brain was yeah, going. Okay. Like, so my, like my mental health never came from doing or being involved in shit. I think it just came from an accumulation of, of stressful yeah. situations, yeah. feeling like I'd nearly got caught it up a few times. Mates either dying or getting seriously injured and being like, fuck, you know, and then having a home life that was through my own fault was, falling apart mm. so there was no stability that was the issue i think and a lot i think if people have not got a stabi stable home yeah home home life i think they're going to be maybe more susceptible to struggling i'm not saying they will be because i still know other guys that yeah. have um you know not necessarily had a stable platform back home but still managed to get on with it but how do you how do you deal with like your first kill or the kills that had happened? Are you very much like is him, him or me? See, I don't, I don't like because so people ask me, oh, what guns you use and all this yeah. sort of stuff, and I'm like, I don't give a shit about that. It's just like that's a that's a tool to a um, the work that I do. I enjoy being a soldier, as in the pride I've got from being able to. Grizz through tough times. I like the art of being a special forces soldier, you know, using the ground to your advantage and yeah. understanding tactics. Yeah. But when it came to like all the, what I say is the sort of negative side to it, which is, you know, you are involved in war fighting, which means to get the upper hand and, yeah. and 
get advantage over the enemy you involved in sort of death and you know ultimately extreme violence mm. but that's just a byproduct and i don't i would never think about it like that mm. i don't think about what i've got up to and dwell on it and i don't want to yeah i've, I've dealt with all that and you know it, it, when you're involved in a in a firefight it's weird because you become excited it's adrenaline fueled the adrenaline kicks in and then once it's over and you get back to reasonable safety there's a i'd say there's a come down yeah we're like Ooh, feel a bit flat and then it gets the opportunity comes around again so there's no i don't think now after i've gone through my journey of with mental health that there's no point in me going back and revisiting that stuff yeah. because it's done yeah and i've yeah how how's your mental health been then after that tour when you came home and you had a reality check of probably seeing your daughter seeing your wife realize what's going on on tour how was that for you? How did you deal with it? Because what we're talking here, 2010, you know, there wasn't people on the internet talking about this sort of no. stuff. There wasn't an open book of, oh, you know, especially the culture we're from. It's like, sort yourself out, crack on with it. What are you doing? Man up. It was kind of that attitude. I didn't, um, I don't think I did deal with it. I remember, so I remember coming back off a tour late on. We'd gone out on a, we'd done a job. There was a, we got whacked by an IED on the way out. Something coming, coming. A bomb. Uh, yeah. So one of the, it wasn't a bad one. Yeah. It was a part, it was like, still don't know what it was. It was like a partial detonation or something. A couple of lads got blown onto their asses and that was it, you know, lucky. Mm. And literally about 15 hours after that, I was walking down Paul I Street shopping and it was like grey, raining. I can remember it being miserable and I was like, and I had this weird out of body experience. I probably didn't then, but when I think back on it, I had this weird thing where I was looking at myself going, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah. Like, what is this all about? Yeah. You've come home to this. And, you know, Paul I Street back then, it wasn't. Mm. It wasn't, it wasn't the best. If you're not feeling great about yourself, <laughs> you don't, don't go to don't Paul I Street. <laughs> <laughs> don't pick Oxford no, or something. Fuck it, no. Skip, don't go to a fucking... There's a few places we can rattle out. Luton, Luton Paul, Paul I Street. Street. <laughs> don't go it was there. like Star Wars you're down there. low. <laughs> So, I'm, and I think that was the the beginning of my ah oh shit. What's going on here? Yeah, no, I didn't. It wasn't conscious then. Then I went for you know still in the military doing work, all that sort of stuff. And then I remember finding it hard to dig deep to motivate myself. We're okay. getting ready to go away again, Stress. and I was like, "Fuck, am I doing?" Like, I'm, I was in, you know leading guys now, you know, and I'm like, "Fucking hell." I've, this isn't fair on these lads, let alone myself. So I sort of presented to, there was a psych um, department, very small. And I went in there, ex going in there like under cover of fucking darkness yeah. almost, you know, fucking hell. Went in there, I was like, look, I'm feeling like this. Let me know what I need to do so I can crack on. I yeah. want to get me, I was literally like, it was, I didn't say it like that, but then it went, you know, the conversation was longer, but I was like, just tell me what I need to do so I can get my mojo back. Yeah. I just want to get, and she, they were like, okay, yeah, you know, is this what you're feeling? Blah, blah, blah. And mm. I was like, yeah, fine, I've got to go. Mm. And they said, I'll come back again. I said, keep this off the record. I don't want anyone knowing yeah. because otherwise that's going to fuck my career up. What, a sign of weakness? Yeah, I think yeah. so. I just didn't want anyone knowing. I yeah. just, anyway, kept going back to see that person. And they're like, look, we've been having a few chats now. There's something going on and we need to, there's got to be some things that give now for you to start. We, we need space to help you to get back on track. Yeah. So we're going to have to tell the relevant people. And I'm like, <sighs> I, I was like, okay, yeah, fine. If that's what you think. So there you go and get into Then it's like, okay, Foxy's got an issue. And then I got signed off work. And, and then I felt bad there. I went, I wasn't coming into work. Did the boys know by this point? Yeah, I think they did, but yeah. I pretended to myself they didn't. Okay. I kept telling if I did see anyone, it was like, oh yeah, my ears, my earrings fucked. Yeah, okay. All that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, and then, yeah, then the next thing I know, I'm sort of seeing psychs and that uh, more uh, different establishments within the navy. So I'm going to a naval establishment and sitting down with their psych department or in their psych department with a psychologist and. They're saying, right, this is what you've got. You've got PTSD, you've got fucking burnt, you're burnt out and you're mildly depressed. Here's some drugs for the depression, which I was like, okay. So took that away. 
and they kept saying you should we're gonna have to you know the thing that's gonna fix you is to leave the military and i was like no i don't want to leave the military i got fucking um so that, that kept going on i was mate fucking antidepressants knocked me out i was like fuck that i took them for a bit but i said like, i can't do it because it's just literally for two days after taking something i couldn't talk to anyone it was like ridiculous so i ended up uh went on a holiday with um my family at the time and i was a miserable bastard to be around i was it was terrible i was i was a terrible person to be around not in any way you know, not physically terrible. I was just a fucking miserable bastard. I came back from that holiday and I could see the impact that it had had on people. And I was like, right, okay, maybe I need to start the ball rolling with this medical discharge. So I went in and I said, look, you're obviously right. Let's let's start the ball rolling. And it was a very quick transition. They're mm -hmm. like, okay, fine, b -b -b paperwork done. Fill out this, go and see this person go down to your med boards, you go down to the, the uh, it was in near Portsmouth, you go into a room in your suit, there's like fucking high ranking officers, you sit down, for a nice room, and they're like, blah, 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 this is, this is who you are, this is what's happened, and um, we now recommend you that you are now medically discharged, and your last date, that happened in something like, say, say that was towards the end of Feb, maybe. And what year? Oh, uh, 2012. 2012, okay. And uh, they're like, so your and your TX date, that's your the date, your, your transmission date, they yeah. fucking transmit you out, Um, is the 5th of April, 2012. So I was like, okay, fine. So I sort of like got out of that room, I had a van at the time, got in the back of the van, got out of the suit, got in my jeans and T-shirt. I was like, oh, fucking maybe, maybe this is, maybe that's it now. It's all good and... Did you feel good when you left there at that moment? I, well, no, because I felt like there's a new chapter. Yeah, new no chapter. So civvy like, life. Okay, yeah. yeah. So civvy <laughs> life. I was still getting paid up until whenever. So I was like, okay, it's cool. How long do you get paid for when you remember. left? Is it like a uh, year they give you or anything like that? Nah, it's a bit. I got a medical pension, yeah. so I got a, I get a lump sum. So that was coming, and then you get I get a very meagre pension, but it's better than yeah. nothing. Um, so I was like, okay, this is cool, and then. Uh, Fast forward a few weeks and I wait. So April the 5th comes, so that's my last day. I, I wasn't at camp or anything. I didn't go. I was like, it's my last day. I had a few beers. Mm. And then woke up on the 6th of April and fucking felt terrible. I was like, shit, I'm not part of, I'm not part of it now. Yeah. It's actually real. It's like, and that's when everything spiraled out of control when I was just fucking, thought I'd failed at stuff. Family life was falling fucking, was, by this stage I'm into another relationship. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and then sort of basically found myself on top of a cliff because I was like fucking think thought I'd failed at everything, and uh, I remember having a meltdown, and uh, I'd had another argument, fucking standard. I was like, well, I've failed at, I've been good at something. It's that it's it's bitten me in the ass. I've been told that this is the best thing for me. I've come out. It's not been the best thing for me. I've obviously my time here is done. That's the way I saw it. I was like, I'm not helping anyone else. I'm causing them. I'm having a nightmare at home. Yeah. I'm a nightmare to them fuckers. So I might as well. So I was, yeah, I remember being on, stood up there like that. Right, this is this is obviously the moment. And then I was like, hang on a minute. Fucking, first of all, I'm probably shit, scared of dying. Yeah. And what, what you know, what, maybe, maybe let's not, let me, maybe I was there thinking, let's not, be so brash let's just fucking but what but i stood up there thinking to myself like well, if i do I'm, i've got to do something about yeah. this and so you then, stood up there thinking like, i want to take my own life now yeah and i was like well i either do that or what do i do to not do that yeah. as in there's something as to and I was like, i've got to change a lot of things i've got to be honest with myself for a start and you know remove myself from Gotta be careful, I say. Just relationships that were unhelpful for me personally. And do you think that was you or the other half of the relationship, or a bit of combo? I think it's both. Combo. I don't. Okay. I'll take. I'll take the rap on all things that I've done. Yeah. Because I've fucked up. But the one thing I've learned is, there's, there's, you know, there's never one side. Tame, as much yeah. as some people will. Yeah. But yeah.
there was yeah what made and what so, was what was the moment when you're up there going you know what i'm not going to do this uh probably because i don't like heights and i, was, I could have picked a better fucking way of doing it <laughs> 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 I'm like that. Fucking hell. Fucking hell, get me up for it. What was I thinking? <laughs> the old balls are tingling. Oh, I know, yeah. <laughs> Fucking, where's the O5? <laughs> uh, 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 joking aside, yeah. would I have done it? I don't know. Well, I didn't, thank fuck. Um, I think it was a little, maybe it was a bit of a process I had to go through. Okay. Maybe it was the only way. Maybe subconsciously I knew I had to fucking do, stare something. Yeah at it to get myself kicked up the arse. Mm. I some I am someone that some well, I used to be, not anymore, but I used to be someone that really needed a kick up the arse mm. sometimes. As a kid mm. at school, you know, I didn't do well at school. That's because I needed a kick up the arse. Yeah. I think that was the last that was my last kick up the arse. I think after that I was like, you don't fucking don't get to the point where you need to kick up the arse. I think it was there was a lot of things that went on on that cliff. Actually I never not thought of it this way ever. The fact that it was that I've always needed that kick up the arse, even though I've had the motivation, you know, the the ability to join the special forces and be in it and be self motivated. But the motivation comes from you're doing a job. Yeah. So you, if people are out, oh, you must be so disciplined. I'm like, am I? I had to do the job anyway. If I didn't, I'd have got bollocked, kicked out, and don't get paid. So there's yeah. your motivation. Whereas yeah. it, when you're outside and you, you're dealing with your own mental health, mm. there isn't. You've got to be disciplined. Mm. And that, that moment on the cliff was like, you've got to fucking sort your discipline out, mate. I think that's maybe what it was. Did you feel completely lost at that point? Yeah, I was fucking yeah. having a mare. I was like fucking constantly fucking crying in my car. Yeah. Just having a fucking meltdown. Like, fucking hell, what's happened? Like, just I was always hitting the self-destruct button. I had a fucking... I've got rid of that now. Well, get on the smash and just trying to... Well, yeah, whatever. Just... I don't know whether that because that's another thing. It's like, does that come from being guilty about? Is it a survivor guilt thing? I don't yeah. think so. I don't think I ever struggled with that. I think it was just maybe sometimes people don't think they deserve good shit. Yeah, is that how you felt at that time? I think so. Mm. I think so. I'd always try and you know things were like going all right. I'd be like, there's a red button. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see what this does. See what happens. <laughs> this could be fun. Oh, oh fuck it hell. We're back in the mixer. <laughs> yeah. I'm oh, fucking I've taped it up. Fucking take fuck off. <laughs> yeah. Well, how would you deal with that sort of stuff at that time? Were you putting on a front that everything's okay, but deep down crying, going away and dealing with your own emotions? Was there anyone you could actually speak to at that time who you relied on? I found confidence. So there was a few things that fucking snapped me out of it. The main one being that thing. There was one I was working in a restaurant at the time, and mo it's in a seaside town. The majority of people that worked in that restaurant were fucking on their holidays from university. Yeah, young, you know, mm. twenty year, twenty somethings. Mm. And I can remember fucking. I didn't even know, but there's this. I was behind the counter. This fucking twenty year old girl's like that. Fuck, Jason, are you, are you all right? I'm like, yeah, what? I'll smash. Because you've just been staring in space for fucking, like, you're not even here. And I was like, fucking hell. For 20 year old kids fucking yeah. seeing that. There's, and I was like, so there was bits like, there was like little bits going on like that. Didn't speak to any of the lads because I felt embarrassed. Um, Ended up getting a job for a corporate business. <laughs> <laughs> fucking hell I got a job for a corporate business and um, the guy so what happened was I fucking hell I'm going all over the place sorry lads it's good, fucking, good I basically met this guy who was high up high up in businesses and he was basically running globally this facilities management company called Sodexo and he was like that I met him at a dinner party he he goes, what are you up to now? And he knew. I think he knew my background. And I was like, oh, you know, do you know what? I don't know. I don't, I'm I'm lost. Yeah. And he's like, okay. He goes, oh, I'll speak to a few people. Anyway, he had a guy that was an M, one of his M. So he was globally responsible mm. for a business that was huge, and there were segments within it. And he'd introduced me to one of the. He got, they were called MDs, but the blokes are CEOs of fucking segments. And yeah. this guy ran the UK's. 
well, actually, it was wider than that, but it was it was the UK's Ministry of Defence um, contract, mm. which was fucking enormous for them. Guy was called Andy. He lives down here. Yeah, lives now, mm. and uh, he was a four years years ago. He's a, he was used to be a naval officer. Left and got into facilities management. Did really well. It was awesome. Blew it. And I met him. I met him. He was his offices at the time were up in Aldershot, and he's like, you. Got, Hi, how's it going? You know, Phil says blah blah blah, and I was like, yeah, yeah. He said you you got your CV. I was like, yeah, give him that. I'd never been given any. I'd never been taught how to write a CV. Yeah. Give him that, and he's just like, get out. It's like written in red crayon. It's like that. <laughs> yeah, my name's Foxy. Foxy. I was in the Marines. Went to war. Come home. <laughs> he's like, mate. He goes, um, leave this with me. And like, the, the not, mate, the, I owe a lot to that guy. Yeah. I need to fucking phone him actually today and say I'm down. Let's try and see him at some point. Anyway, <laughs> I fucking be mad where we go. So he's like, leave that with me. He's like, right, okay, blah, blah, blah. He goes, I'll I'll get this rewritten for you. And I think he spent his own money. Yep. He gave it to someone he knew that was that wrote CVs, mm. sent it back to me. And uh, he goes, what do you think? And I'm like, ah, who's this? <laughs> fucking hell. This, you want to employ this bloke? And he's like, he's like, that's you, you twat. And I'm like, all oh, right, okay. He's like, right. He goes, I'm going to give you a job. He said, it isn't going to be the job for you. I don't see you doing it for a long time. I don't know. But just take it for what it is. And he gave me a job. He gave me a job as a projects manager where I could just shadow people within the business. I had a company car. Brilliant. I was like, fucking hell. Um, and it was all right. It was a good job, mate. And and I, but I, it just wasn't me. Yeah. And it, and I was fucking pressing that red button every fucking day over and over again. Mm. And I was a headache to people because I wasn't, you know, I had access to nearly every military base that was on their contract. And all I was doing was going on board onto a base yeah. and using the gym. Yeah. <laughs> and they're like, where are you? I'm like, oh, I'm just, I'm, just... I'm down at the, uh, with the drivers, seeing how they're getting on. <laughs> that fucking benching. That fucking just, fuck, you know. It all, it just went fucking, it went sideways. I was causing, I, did, I ended up having an accident in the car. I got caught speeding and they were like, ah, right, we got to put a tracker on the car. Otherwise you don't get a car. Yeah. The, the insurer, the company's insurance said, take the car away from him or you put a tracker on. I'm like, are you fucking joking? So they're like, yeah, it's, okay, fine. You, have you tried driving by the speed limit yeah. around the country? Yeah. It is fuck. I had old old women tooting at me because I was like, <laughs> road hog, <laughs> fucking. Hell. I was getting bollocked all the time because where the beacon on my car thought the speed limit starts are different to where the signage is. Yeah. So I kept getting in the shit, and I'm like, "You fucking beacons!" Well, ah, but our technology's not wrong. I'm, and I got so obsessed, I was going around and taking pictures of where of where a thirty started, and where, and like, literally, <laughs> it made me so. In the end, it, I was causing so much trouble for this guy. I remember we went. There was an awards evening in London for the business, and I fuck knows how I got invited to go, but I got invited to go probably because of Andy. And I saw him in the bar. It's packed the bar in the hotel that we were all staying at. And I went up to him and he was just laughing. He goes, mate, how's it going? I says, oh, he goes, I know. He goes, I I, I keep a fucking close eye on you. And I was like, mate, I'll tell you what. I says, I'm going to do you a favour. I'm going to leave. I said, I'm going to leave. Yeah. Because this is too much of a headache for you. You've got a business to run. And he's like, mate, don't leave. He goes, I'll make you redundant. And I wasn't even entitled to a oh, redundancy result. package. And he also... What a good bloke. Well, before then... Do you get a nice payout as well? For, 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 for who I was. Yeah, for who I was. Yeah. yeah, okay, yeah. But before then, I, we, I met up with him again at some... It was at a works gathering. And I ended up meeting up with him for... like. Some people didn't like the fact that I was knew him. Yeah, okay. Sort of was a bit, that, was, that was another Jealousy thing. Jealousy type thing. Yeah, yeah okay. why is he fucking yeah, getting yeah, to speak yeah. to Andy? And yeah. he'd come over and he's like, how are you doing? And I was like, yeah, I'm all good. He goes... Mate, I can see you're not that good. This is when I was going through my whole... Net, I think it was around the same sort of time I was doing my, my fucking stood on a cliff thing. Yeah. And he's like, mate, I can see you're not good. He goes, let me help you. He goes, I've got a... I've got a uh, you know, my... The stuff that comes with my position in this business allows me to have a medical cover. Yeah. He says, I will get you... I'll use my medical cover for you and we're going to go and find someone to help you. And he opened up to me a little bit about stuff that he had going on, you know, 
being running a business yeah. and all this. All the pressures with it. And he and he yeah. he basically helped me find the person that fixed me, and f so I owe him an awful lot. Wow, sounds like a proper proper. Yeah, man. he's all he's fucking yeah. good, good, good guy, really good guy. Who's the person who introduced you to that changed your life? No, well, there was a few, but so he, I went on, I went and saw one person. And it fell flat on its face. You'll know straight away, right, when you go and see someone yeah, asking so. the wrong questions or... Yeah, yeah so okay. I went and saw one person and it fell flat on its ass. And I went back to him and I was like, mate, he goes... And he, was like, he said, look, we're just going to keep looking. He mm. says, it's not going to happen straight away. And then I ended up meeting... <laughs> so there was, a, there was a doctor. It was Dr. Doctor Alex Toombs. Down in fucking... Down in Totnes, it was. In Devon. So I've turned up, um, waiting in a big clinic. There's old people everywhere, and I'm like, anyway, this this you know this young lady comes down, and she says, "Are you here to see Doctor Toombs?" And I'm like, "Yeah." She's like, oh, "Come with me." So go on upstairs. She's she's opened the door, let me in. So I've gone in, and then she's closed the door behind herself, and I'm like, "You all right?" And I was like, "She was like, yeah." And I was like thinking, are you going to go and get fucking Alex or what? Mm. She, and there was this weird pause. Mm. She goes, no, no, I'm Dr. Toombs. And mm. I'm like, oh. <laughs> I, was like, oh no, I, was waiting, I was waiting for an old bloke. <laughs> I was like, didn't realise. And she was fucking awesome. Quality. So we did a couple of sets. Well, the funny thing is, the way I remember it is we did that one session in the clinic. And I was like, ah, I can't be doing sitting in here on a couch. Let's go outside into the woods. Apparently that's not what happened. We did like fucking about seven sessions yeah. over two months in that room mm. before we'd worked out we were going to go walking in the woods. Mm. But it was the walking in the woods and talking to her that helped me out. But the funny thing with that is she was getting married and then moving to France. So we got to the point where she was like, right, you're done. And I'm like, what? She's like, you're fucking done. You don't need to see me anymore. And I'm like, well, no, no, I'm going to be seeing you all the time. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. like, comfort fucking. Yeah. She's like, no, you're done. And I'm like, well, that's fucking, that's enlightening, but also scary. She disappears, done. She was moving, she was quite um, holistic, so yeah. she was, she would kill me, she fucking <laughs> listen to this. She won't really kill me, because she's like, I was like, she's a hippie. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, and yeah. She was going off to France mm. to live in a wigwam mm. or something, fucking yeah. mad. And I was like, she, you'll never, like literally disappeared off the face of the planet, doesn't watch TV, fucking all that sort yeah. of stuff. Fast forward a few years and, I'm sat down with the guy that I do the books with, Matt, the, the writer. Mm. And we're talking about this, this like we are yeah, now. Yeah, and he's yeah. like, ah, where are we going to find this Dr. Alex Toombs? I'm like, mate, you'll never find her. She's disappeared off the face of the planet, living off the planet. And he's like, all right, okay. Next day, he fucking messaged me. Go, he goes, is this her? He sent me a screenshot and it's like a website. And, it's, and I was like, well, it's a different last name. I was like, and, and for months I've been telling him, we're never going to find her. Yeah. We're never going to find yeah. her. And he's like, well, there's a number. Can you try it? So I'm like, okay. So I've typed the number into my phone. Press send. It's the same fucking number I had for her. <laughs> and I'm like, hello? She goes, hello? And I'm like, is that Alex? Yeah. I'm like, oh, right. <laughs> it's like, I was supposed to be special forces. <laughs> It's right, it's like, you twat, you've had a number in your phone the whole time. For like literally six months I was telling him, nah, there's no point. We'll never find her. <laughs> but that's when that's when getting back in touch with yeah because you normally you don't ever get back in touch with yeah you, but what by was, this stage what I've was it on. what was it what was it for that really that she spoke to was it you finding the right person to speak to where there was no one judging or did, did you just let everything out to this woman yeah 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 I spoke about all sorts of shit i don't know i did, again it was all a bit blurry but it was very deep but again the only the only people that fix people is themselves. Yeah. You just need someone there to go to down guide. that path. Yeah, yeah okay. go down that way. That's what she did. She's mm. very good. Still, yeah. She's, she's so anyone listening out there who's feeling like you were feeling, what would your advice be? So if you've got to go on the journey, which is to talk to people. You'll get despondent. It is, a, it is an up and down journey and you'll feel despondent if you meet someone that isn't right for you. But that is that should be exciting because it's just te you're just learning something about who you are. You're just learning that that's someone I don't connect with. 
It's not an issue. There's billions of people on the planet. Of course, we're not going to connect with them all. And you're just going to go out and find another one. Yeah. That's that's all. Don't don't lose don't lose faith at the first hurdle mm. because ultimately that's not the way it works. You, you, the very few and far between where you find someone that was lucky enough to find the right person yeah. first off. But it's and the more you speak about stuff, you know, it's, you you go on that journey. If you're in a bad and low place, if you commit to the journey and you're honest with yourself, that's what you got to be. You got to mm. be honest with yourself. You'll come out of it a better version of you. Fact. Yeah. I genuinely believe that. So that's an exciting thing to look yeah, forward absolutely. to. Yeah, absolutely. Do you find that alcohol got in the way for you? I mean, I had an I wasn't un I've never been that bad with alcohol. I can I mean I can fancy myself as a bit of a boozer. Yeah, yeah. But um and I was probably at a point in my life where I was drinking too much. What like binge drinking? No, no. Or daily. I got to the point where I was coming home from whatever I was doing, and bosh, fucking a lot of red wine. Yeah. But I was very functional on it. I mean, not at the time. I'd fucking pass, you know, not pass yeah. out, but I'd go to sleep, wake yeah. up, and I'm like, good to go. Yeah. And I was drinking a lot like that, and that didn't help. You know, mm. I was doing that when I was still in the military. You know, living on my own, split up from the missus. I mean, when we split up, I kept hold of the married quarter, which wasn't helpful. So I lived in a married quarter as a single bloke. With the memories still? Yeah, yeah, with memories and just leading a bit of a single person. I think the rest of the women on the married quarters fucking didn't like me. Because I was just like, Wee! <laughs> all the fucking other lads were like, oh, now he's having a good time. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't really. I was... Obviously, I'm just fucking bouncing yeah. around as a single yeah, bloke. Yeah. But yeah, and I was like, I had an unhealthy relationship with alcohol. Um I've got. I, f I feel I've got a healthy one now. I spend most of the year off booze, dabbling it at Christmas and whatnot. Yeah, same. It's nice, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, isn't it nice to wake up feeling clean? I've become. Good, yeah. ad I've become addicted to the clean yeah. feeling. It's lovely, isn't it? Yeah, I hear you. Sound like a couple of old bastards. I know we do, but, but kind of that's we've been through it. So, yeah, 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 exactly. I'm sick of that. Even now, if I have a drink, I'm like. How am I going to feel tomorrow? Yeah, that's the, I don't want to yeah. feel like that. And I used to really, really love the drink. Yeah. And now I'm like, I can drink it. And I'm like, don't love it like I used to. Yeah, same. I can take or leave it. Mm. It's quite, I find it quite empowering to say no. Yeah. I, I, went, I was at a, a works dinner last night. And everyone, and it was being paid for by the work side of things. And they're like, come on, you can have what you want. Yeah. And I'm like, no. And it's funny because you watch everyone else going, but, well, but well I was going to have one. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, feel free. I'm like, I'd love you to have yeah. one. I don't care. Mm. But they're like. It makes a. It's weird. It's weird, isn't it? Because isn't yeah. if you're not it, it, people who don't take drugs, people will go, okay, don't take drugs, fair enough, let him be. But if you say I'm not having a drink, like, Mate, what do you mean you're not having a drink? Bonkers. It's bonkers, it's, isn't it? it? Is it's the only drug in the world that people get upset that you're not having. I know. Yeah. I'm like, what? You want me to get fucked up with you? Yeah. I'm but like, but roll back years ago, we'd be in the same. Go. What are you all about not having a drink? Tuck in. Let's I've done like, it. I've yeah, done we've exactly been the same. Yeah. You yeah, fanny. you big fanny, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, yeah, <fucking laughs> what was the, so? What was the movement after that? Then, how long were you dealing with PTSD? Would you say until the until you actually broke into the sort of the TV world? So obviously, there's got a. Well, I was still dealing with it when I broke into that. Yeah, there was lots of different things that had to fall into place before I was fully, fully over it. I'd say a lot of people say you, you could never get over it. That's I I disagree. I disagree. It's just you learn how to move on with your life. Yeah. And if you want it to be a problem, it will be a problem. If you don't want it to be a problem, it won't. That said, I'll never say never. There's always going to be something that could trip you Oops, up. Yeah. And if you think like that, then you'll be ready for it, yeah. I hope. Yeah. But for me, I think, you know, I was starting to struggle with my mental health in 2009. Yeah. No. It must have been before that. You know, I'd... Genuinely say I was starting to struggle with me off in 2006 after the breakup of me, my, my marriage. And so you had a six year dealing with that, but only really dealing with it I, for the final two years. Yeah, I yeah. think so. But obviously I I didn't know that. I was just yeah. like, oh, whatever. If you look at where everything was condensed, like all the fucking lines in my life, yeah. you had like my career going away on tours, arguments with a missus, yeah. kid born sick, car breaks down. That's yeah. where it fucking snaps yeah so that would have been like 2006 really yeah and then it just keeps building 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 
then there's that there's that point in must have been 2013 the cliff then 14 i'm fucking like a waif and stray bouncing around mates fucking sofas yeah 15 not dissimilar relationships fucking well 13 14 relationships all over the place probably not very dysfunctional uh then 15 things started to things started to change so i'd done it i'd had a really good stint with alex yeah things were coming good there I'd, second wife that's oh no that's sorry alex the while well, you work with the, the yeah, doctor uh, the doctor yeah. yeah okay um i set up an organization rock to recovery with jamie there was a guy there called malcolm he was again i i actually do disservice here because malcolm was just as good as alex okay but different ways so i had two different people that i was Brilliant. chatting to um and then in the early 15 one of my best mates aldo who used to be in the marines you know i, I was fucking struggling for work at the time so i'd left that job the small pot of money yeah. that andy was kind enough to fucking hook me up with was drying out rapidly yeah and uh I went and did a job with Aldo actually down at Southampton Uni. We were stunt rigging and they've got a wind tunnel there. Yeah. And uh, stunt rigged something for BBC and we had a laugh again. And then a few weeks after that, he's like, mate, I got a job out in Madagascar working for a, working for a production crew out there. Can you, can you do it? You'd be the team medic and the underwater cameraman. It's dive buddy. Yeah. And I was like, fuck yeah, that sounds awesome. Yeah. So I went out and that was, that was the first fucking building block, really, for my proper recovery. So I'd done all the done all the theory, yeah, and then I needed to start put it into action, thing, yeah, put yeah, some okay. like positive, like thinking positively. Like I, I'm a big believer in if you think positively, like properly positive, not fucking wishy washy. Yeah. Just keep thinking. I'm, you know, I'm in a good place. I'm going to do good things. I want to do good things. Yeah, I don't think you need to be genuine particularly specific you probably could be but good Agreeing. things yeah i think you attract you know Agreeing. a positive attitude attracts positive behaviors That's attracts right. positive action your word is your wand yeah exactly yeah. And, and and these things started to happen so i did that did a good job had a good time didn't moan on it just got on with it and then off that sas you know before it was sas came about and i was like i'm denied about it don't get me wrong it's fucking a very controversial decision what for you personally for me personally and for the people I know that it would impact as in the group. Yeah. And then I thought, well, this is an opportunity. I can't, you know, I've got, I've got a mental health brand, you know, I'm fucking typecast as someone with PTSD. I can't get a job in, in security because I'm, I can't get a big job in security. Can't get, can't go away and use weapons because everyone's like, oh, he's fucking mad. And so I'm like, what can I do? It's like having a degree and never being able to use it. Yeah. And this was an opportunity. And I was like, I don't fucking agree with it, but it sounds really good. So I was like, fuck it, do it. I'd have made a mine at the time. I was like, mate, if you don't do it, someone else will. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, fine. Yeah. So I went and did it. And then that's, yeah. So that was in 2016? 2015. 2015. Still. So I came back from Madagascar yeah. and literally bounced <clears throat> into doing SAS. Yeah. Who? Then after SAS went and did road across the Atlantic, yeah. which was another, you know, positive nail in a not a coffin, yeah. in my chariot to yeah. becoming in a to getting myself into a better. Who place. approached you for SAS? Um, uh, it was so, it's the program, the Channel Four of SAS. He who dares. SAS who dares wins. Who dares? <laughs> <laughs> he, he who dares, dares Rodney. <laughs> This time next, next year, year we're millionaires. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Del Boy and Rodders will be happy with that. Shout out to those boys. <laughs> um, Channel 4 SAS, Who Dares Wins, who approached you? I got a phone call off a guy called Andrew. And he was, he was like, I'm an assistant producer for this company, production company, and we're working on a project for Channel 4. Can we talk to you about it? And I'm oh, like, yeah. Mate. And then we just started chatting. Uh it sort of went along the lines of, can we condense special forces selection into seven days? And I just fucking was like, fuck off, mate. Yeah. And then went on a little bit, conversation, started talking a bit more positively about it. 
I thought, and I've said this a lot of times, but I thought I was being, I thought I was going to be an off-screen consultant. I was like, yeah. oh, this would be a nice chunk of work. Yeah. yeah a bit of consultancy for TV. And I did that job in Madagascar. This what, telling them what to do? This is how to yeah, react yeah, stuff. This. this is yeah. the training. Okay, fair play, yeah. And then they were like, no, no, we want you to be one of the fucking guys running this. And I was like, well, okay, yeah. I'm fucking, obviously you'll pixelate the faces and that. And they were like, no. They're like, that shit don't work anymore. Yeah. We need people, we want people to engage with you. And you're like, and this was their biggest hurdle. This is what they were nervous about because they're like, are we ever going to get these guys? Yeah. And that's when I was starting to think about it and spoke to my mate and he's like, mate, fucking, you should have a go, take the opportunity. So yeah, took the opportunity. Was there really knockback for you? Did you have the fear at all of going, any of the boys looking down at you going, why is Foxy doing that? Yeah. We've got to keep, we've got to keep stum. We're told to keep stum. This is our yeah. lifestyle. This is our world. You keep stum. Don't go on telly. Because you would have been the original one, right? Yeah. Yeah. How did lot. you deal with that? Thought about it. I remember having a couple of phone calls with mates of mine close to me. I was like, uh, I'm going to be doing something that you're going to fucking hate. And they're like, what is it? And I was like, this. And they're like, oh, what's, what's work said? And I'm like, well, I've had a conversation. Got, before I even spoke to work about it, work. I wasn't even fucking working. You weren't even employed with no. them. You were out for four years. Three, well, the four the years, point yeah. being is I'd been out yeah. for three years. And no one had ever, no one officially from work had phoned up and gone, how are you doing? Right, okay. And I don't expect it. I yeah. don't expect it. How are you doing? And I'm, you know, of course I don't expect it. I'm fucking in the big yeah. wide world. I've got to fend for myself. I just, I'm struggling for money, work, just fucking have no idea what my future holds. So opportunity comes up. I take it or I'm at least contemplating it, seriously contemplating it. I get a phone call. It's like from someone that worked in the in the one of the cells that looks at what people are doing outside and making sure they don't do it. And then he's like, "Hey, how's it going?" I'm like, "Yeah, yeah, all good." It's like, uh, just thought I'd phone up, see how you are. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, uh, we've heard that there's a rumor that you uh, might be getting involved in this show that the Channel Four are looking at doing. And I'm like, well, "All right, yes, yeah." You've, your sources are yeah. good. Your sources are good. Yeah. Uh, and it, what there was, I think it was like, "What are you thinking of doing?" I was like, "Well, what do you think I should do?" And they're like, "We'll say no." I'm like, "I says, well, that's all well and good, but I fucking, I'm, just, I'm in a shit place." Yeah. I says, "No one's, no one's phoned me to see how I don't want that." But the only phone call I get is to tell me to turn down work. Yeah. I'm like. I can't get a job as a fucking... I can't get a job in security. I couldn't go into the police. Can't get a job as a fireman because I've got fucking PTSD. Yeah. I'm like, what am I supposed to do? I, I can't do anything. It's like, well, there was no real answer. And I was like, oh, it's just like fuck, I, this is an opportunity. I says, you know I'm not going to stitch any of the lads up. I'm not going to do that. That's not, not who I am. In fact, why don't, why don't I become the conduit of what what's happening I can feed you oh no we couldn't officially you know I'm like well you know you know I'm not going to stitch you up and I think it was like well I said something along the lines of what does what does it mean if I did do it and they were like well you could get PNG'd as in persona non grata and I'm like what's that what's what does PNG, that mean yeah and they were like well you're not allowed on you won't be allowed on camp and I'm like well fucking I'm not allowed on anywhere I'm fucking <laughs> I'm not fucking left. <laughs> I was like, okay, does you know, does it affect my welfare package and all this sort of thing? As in my, you know, my pension. They're yeah. like, no, no. And I'm like, okay. I was like, look, I'm not gonna. What's the process? And they're like, look, you got to go through a process of EPO asking, requesting for permission to. And I'm like, look, okay, let's do that. Let's. I'm. I don't want to fucking wind anyone up, but there's an yeah. opportunity, and if I don't do it, someone, someone else, else is going to do yeah, it. Yeah, agree. And and you know, I said, you know, I'm not going to fucking. You know, I was still very torn about doing it because I didn't agree with it. Yeah. I didn't agree with it, but... But what an opportunity. Yeah. And I also, Look. I eventually was like, I'm going to use this as an opportunity to fucking talk about mental health. I've been told for ages by other people in different professions, don't talk about poor mental health. Fucking hell, don't let anyone know yeah. that. And I was like, but that's doing me no favours. Yeah. I've tried that and it's fucking not worked. Yeah. I was like, I'm going to fucking talk about it. Anyway. That's quality. <laughs> So what was that first one? Where was that first one? Wales. Did you do a pilot first? No. No, you didn't. No. The, they basically gone with an idea. Everyone was shitting their pants. Not us. We Whose fucking... idea was it originally? Right. 
Phil Campions. No. Was it? F- no. I don't. It was not. There's a guy called Alex who worked for Minnow Films. He was in development. He came up with the idea. They came up with the idea. No one else. We got approached to facilitate that idea. We. Yeah. We got asked to go down there and could this be possible? We were consultants, if anything. And so I would say without us, there would be no show or there wouldn't be a very a good version of it. Mm. But they came up with the idea. Okay. The production company owned the IP. And what did and what was your role in that then? In what? In that first one in Wales. What did you have to do when they were filming you? Did you know that was going on Channel 4? Did you know your face we was going to be... We knew it was Channel 4. We knew our faces were going on it. It was a little... It was an experiment. It was an experiment. And we... Ter- so they had different people go on reckeys. There's a couple of lads that were thinking about doing it. They went on the first recce and did a little bit of work, came back from that. Then they were like, we don't want to do it. They got cold feet. Okay. Fair play. Yeah. So I was there. I was like, right, Ollie. Yeah. In. Right. It was Ollie Ollerton. Yeah. Yeah. And me and him went on a recce with the guy that pretty much came up with the idea, but worked for Minnow. Yeah. And a producer. Okay. We went into Wales and we looked at all the different locations that that producer who had scouted the location and was like, what do you think about this? What you... That producer is now my wife, by the way. Is that right? Yeah. So that's where we first met. Quality. Um, she'd done all the location stuff. And we were like, yep, yeah, that works. That works. We can do this here. Looked at different things, mapped out different routes. We were up there a week, stayed in a and b and fucking Breaking. basically looked at stuff. Mm. And then we went and looked at um, Penny Fan, yeah. did that. I came away from that and I was getting ready to row across the fucking North Sea. And I remember, I can remember sitting down the night before we wrote, started off rowing across the North Sea in a fucking shitty, air, like the Airbnb wasn't even Airbnb, shitty B&B in fucking Colchester or something. Mm. And I had to, and I remember writing down the whole route card for fucking what the routes were that we did on that thing. So we, like me and Ollie put a you know, Put in all together. a bit of shift, yeah. But we didn't, we just, we didn't put it all together because that's taken a lot away from the producers and the production company. They did a fucking shitload. But they of can it. take it to a point when you take it to the next. Yeah, point. we just okay. did that, and we like, oh, right, bosh, yeah, okay. there's all that, and then they do all the logistics around it. Okay. Um, came back from that, and then we get him building up and going to get away. The other names got thrown in. Who else was thrown in on year one? Yourself, Ollie, and and, and Colin, Colin. McCollin. Okay. The Scottish guy. Yeah. And so we went up there after we had done a fucking, been on a recce. There was two guys that had been on the recce before. They'd done a, they'd looked at initial locations and me and Ollie went up and looked at other stuff. Mm. And then it, we all turned up and it all, st- and then it just fell in. We were like, oh, right, okay, we'll just get on with it. And they were just all filmed. Yeah. What, uh, was it on Channel 4 that year one? Yeah. Yeah. What was that feeling like for you, knowing that your face is going to be on Channel 4? Exciting, but scary. Yeah. Um, I knew as well, because the second episode was when I started talking about my poor mental health and why I'd left the military. And it was the first time, obviously, that was that, you know, I've spoken about it, but I haven't fucking, yeah. not on that level. Yeah. And it was, the, it was one of the reasons why I wanted to do it in the end, was to, to see, to talk about it. Mm. And I knew it was coming in that episode and I was fucking no, 24 hours before that episode. Yeah. I was a twat to be around because yeah. I was so nervous about what, how that would land. Yeah. I've been told for ages not to talk about poor mental health. It will stitch yourself up. And it was all right. What was the knock on effect when you actually first saw it come live and you saw yourself on the TV screen and talking about mental health? What was the positivity that come out of that? It was good feedback. Yeah. I was surprised. I didn't know actually. Not surprised. I was just relieved. 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 Yeah. Relieved. Because I was like, "Fucking hell, is this going to go?" I'm opening myself. It was more because it was exposing. I was like yeah. airing my dirty laundry. And actually, this is another thing I've got for people listening. It's the most empowering thing talking about what people would consider your weaknesses, yeah. and also you're not having to worry about your secrets coming out because you fucking got it out there. Yeah. You're like, ah, "This is who I am." Take it or leave it. Yeah. Yeah. 
It's yeah. You'd have helped. You would have helped millions of millions of people. You know. Maybe. But yeah, hundred percent, folks. hundred percent. You've helped millions of people by just going, Bob. That's me. People mm. looking up to you as like a, you know, a hero. Mm. Wow. Well, uh, yeah. Yeah. I hope so. How's your journey been since that first one? Because what we now, so you did that 2015, you've just now done the 2023 one. Has it always been civilians? And when did it turn into when you're putting celebrities on? Civilians became, so we did that one, second one in it. In, so that one. So what first one was Wales, second one yeah, was? Second one was Ecuador. <laughs> third one was Morocco. And then the fourth one, we went to Chile. And the fourth one was when they were like, right, we're bringing in celebs as well. So we went out there for a long time. Yeah. We filmed the normal one, had a couple of days off, and then they brought the celebs out and we did a celeb one. And then since then, it's been celeb, uh, normal celeb, normal celeb, normal celeb, up until last year when we just did celeb. And why do you think that was? Do you think the viewing figures were more, they were more interested in celebrities than they were just civilians doing it? So there'd be, there was, I, personally don't know the full in the full legit reasons yeah. but i would suggest that it was money yeah okay the the shows are great they do a lot for people i think you know there's they have people from lots of different backgrounds coming on and i think that's a good thing for people watching but ultimately then they will look at we are running out of, we're we're struggling for money yeah it costs a lot to make it looks a lot do you know rough numbers? Nah, I no, don't. okay. But it's going to be, it's in the millions. Yeah, it's okay. Gotta be. Okay. You, you're taking a hundred, it's 150 crew. Is it? Yeah. Fly, and you're flying, flying halfway to... around the world. Wow, okay. So that, there's a lot of money involved. Yeah, okay. And if that's the case, they're going to look at which one does best for yeah. them. Yeah. And unfortunately, it will be the celebrity one. Yeah. I think people, people are like, oh, why isn't the, why haven't we got the normal one? I prefer the normal people. And it's like, well, no one's fucking watching it. Yeah. You, you might like him. Yeah. <laughs> Watch it then. <laughs> Get the numbers but, um, up. Yeah. Yeah. But they've gone and we, you know, we did the celeb one last year. Which where hasn't come out yet. Where was the celeb one you did with uh, last in 2023 with Matt Hancock? So we did that in 2022. 22 was it? Okay. Yeah. Um, that was in Vietnam. Vietnam. Yeah. What was it like knowing that Matt, Matt Hancock is in your TV program, knowing you, we, all the lads knowing what he's like? Well, we didn't know what he was like, to be fair. We no, just but just know, a, a perception of what he'd done in the pandemic type thing. We didn't know that he was coming on. They never... So this, here's something for people. Is mm. we They keep who they've got as a cast, as contestant, as recruits, whatever you want to call yeah. them, a secret from us. We'll yeah. never know who they are civilian-wise because they're just normal people, so we mm. probably won't know who they are. The the celebrity ones, they try and keep it under wraps, so it's a surprise for us because they love seeing our reaction. Yeah. We'll get we'll find out a little bit about who it is every now and again because you'll, you'll hear rumours. Yeah. You're like, oh, fucking heard he's like, I hope yeah. him. I might like, go to my agent. Come on, who, Come on, who do you fuck you must know? <laughs> Ooh, we can't tell. <laughs> um, with that one, we'd been in Vietnam. We'd filmed the civilian one. So we've done that. We've finished. You have like f it's about three days in between. You have a day off, maybe two. Then you have a day of rehearsals before. Because normally it mirrors what the, you've just done yeah. anyway. So you just need a quick sort mm. of recap. We're on a... And the days off are never really days off. You have meetings with the execs and we're talking about schedules and mm. stuff. And they were like, ah, we, this is 24 hours before we start. They're like, we need to talk to you about the recruits. And we're like, we can out, yeah? Full, like you're going to tell us who can't swim, who's got an eye missing, you yeah. know, whatever. <laughs> yeah. and there's always something that they have to brief yeah. you up on. Hold. Yeah, yeah. There's a recruit that just so you know hasn't can't walk or something. You're like, yeah. ah, well, we'll know that when we fucking yeah. see so them, won't we? And they're like, no, there's a recruit we need to talk to you about. And we're like, all right, okay, what's what's the problem? And they're like, well, it's a reasonably high profile person, and we're like, okay, where is it? And they're like building up. Is there, they're in politics and we're like fucking hell who's this like, who have they managed to convince <laughs> from polity they were like ah, it's Matt Hancock and we're like fuck off <laughs> we're like so at first we like it was a weird response because we were like looking at each other like and Rudy the Americans like ah, who oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, so yeah. who the fuck is that we're like oh mate we'll yeah. brief you up in a minute because obviously they, the Yanks ain't yeah. gonna know are they yeah. and uh, we're like this is gonna be good fun because it's a that's high profile really mm. and you know we get a chance to have a have a pop any politician you, yeah. you know 
It's just the way yeah, of the world. Perfect. Isn't it? Everyone wants yeah. a dig at a politician. Yeah. But then we were like, hang on a minute. How's this going to land? Because he, the, he, there's a lot of people that don't particularly like him. Mm. And we're going to be seen as giving in an, an opportunity for airtime. And even though the, the entire selection process is out of our hands like what are we going to say i'm not getting i'm not going to work yeah just because you got him i'm not working yeah. that's not that's not right and and also we're fucking 24 hours away from filming we're like and we said we were like is this is this a good idea and they're like you know it's on it's on yeah you know you're like okay let's go but i knew we were going to get fucking we got flack you know did the, you get flack for it yeah it's always people fucking Oh, what keyboard warriors, oh, yeah. Yeah, fuck it. You know, yeah. I, might, I see your point, actually, but it's the job I do. You must have been rubbing your hands, all of you, nudging each other again. Fuck, and we're going to stick <laughs> well, I got, this I, one up. I got that fa- <laughs> Do you know what? Well, how would you? No. Okay. We weren't. We were like, right, we're here. Deep down, like, there must deep down there must have been something. There must have been. Imagine if you come in now, you I'm and I pretty, nudging each other. I'm like, pretty apolitical, to be yeah. fair. I don't, people are like, oh, who do you, I'm not, I'm not, I fucking, I believe in people looking out for each other. Yeah. Fucking one way or the other, yeah. we should all be anyway. But yeah, of course. It's like <laughs> fucking hell. You know, yeah, but hold on a minute. It is there's actually poli- Matt Hancock. There's a politician that people <laughs> yeah. want to see get grilled. Yeah. So you're like, okay. Perfect. Um so we you know, but but we did go in there. I'm being honest yeah. now. We went in there as a four and we were at right, we are gonna be fair. Yeah. You know, we, uh, we and you the yeah. thing is on the on the show, you know, people hang themselves we don't need to fucking bait anyone yeah we don't need to bait anyone because most people will do something that will yeah. yeah yeah so we've gone in there we've been fair and to be he is a very intelligent guy yeah and if you ask him to do something he puts a fucking 110 he did didn't in, he yeah digs in yeah. digs in fair play to him on that front but then the mm. bit the bit that got me a little bit is that actually when because you don't we don't when we're filming it we don't see everything and then mm. hear what they say and we're me and Chris was sat Chris Oliver was yeah. sat down with him in that interview. We're like, Colin, what are you doing here? And he's like, Well, I can't remember how exactly it went. Yeah. You'd have to watch it again. But he's like, Well, I went through something pretty big. And we're like, All right, what was that? He could have gone anywhere, mate. Yeah. Oh, we're not going to fucking. T-. And he was like, Well, dealt with the pandemic, didn't we? Mm. Didn't I? And we're like, ah, Did you? He's like, Yeah, I did. And he got all fronty. Yeah. And I'm like. Okay, and we did this whole we did the whole thing anyway. We talked to him, we spoke about things, challenged him on some stuff, you know, put stuff to him, and he and actually we were like, look, the fucking slate's wiped clean here. Yeah. You know, you can just take it for what it yeah. is, and off he went. Anyway, he then went out of there into the fucking their recruits dorm with the rest of the celebs, and they're like, what what happened? What happened? And he was like, well, you know. Asked us the obvious questions, and they're like, "What about?" And they're like, "Well, he, they asked me about the pandemic, didn't?" And we, I was like, "No, we didn't." No, we didn't fucking yeah. watch that. You fucking yeah. you yeah. wanted to talk about it. Mm. You led the conversation. Mm. As soon as you went down that route, we we're like, "Fine, we'll go down there. Mm. We'll go where you want to go." <laughs> so I'm like, "Fucking watch it carefully," because I watch everything carefully. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You fucking. You f- <laughs> But no, but it's done. The, the, the show is done fair as well. Yeah. They, they, like even the even the producers will be like, okay, we've got to be. It's balanced. Mm. Everyone's like, oh, it's all a stitch up. It's not. Do you enjoy going away on these when they call you up and say, right, we're going away? For how long would you be in somewhere like Vietnam? How long would you be in these places for? Vietnam is probably about five weeks ish. Does that excite you before going there? Or do yeah, you, yeah, yeah. I love traveling. I love going away and working abroad. I love working with the lads. And the like, the production we have a it's a great laugh. Mm. It is yeah, stressful, better. stressful. Is it stressful? Is it? Yeah. Why? What Just pressure? Lots of, lots of different, lots of different departments within the within the production. They, you know, there's different tasks. You're trying to move that many people. Okay. That you have to got you have someone that's the first AD, the first assistant director who yeah. is responsible for moving people and schedules. Okay, that is a fucking hard job. Yeah. That person. There's a guy on it called Nick. He's yep. been doing the last few. A, a thankless task. I'll thank him now. But, it, you know, we all lose our shit. You know, we're not, we're supposed to be here, fucking yeah. driving around in circles, fucking hell, mate. And he's like, fuck. And he's trying to move cameras here, there, and everywhere. They're trying to get him up the top of a mountain. And there's helicopters coming in. They're burning fuel, which everyone's like, oh, that's yeah. fucking another 10 grand <laughs> done. 
He's like, <laughs> right, and it, that's why it gets stressful. It's yeah. just a lot of moving parts. Yeah, 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 a lot yeah. of moving parts. You've got the you've got the med department that are trying to look after everyone. You've got psychologists keeping an eye on everyone. You've got health and safety. Cameras sure everywhere. We're not doing something too stupid. And we're like, we want to do this. And they're like, you can't do that. That's fucking dangerous. And you're like, we're being idiots. Like, yeah, fuck that. And, fuck yeah, well, yeah, hang yeah. on a minute. Let's have a fucking. Yeah. Well, it's, <laughs> it's, in, it's really exciting. There's a lot of it's moving parts. A lot of moving parts. Yeah. So what, opportunities have, what opportunities have arisen on the back of SAS on well, TV? It's given me all the opportunities. I'd You've had. Me being sat here with you. Yeah. But that's, Books, that's the biggest one, isn't it? Brighton. To get on to that's the fucking highlight, mate. It is, so mate, I, of course. Mate, I had one. I fucking a couple of years ago, I got asked to turn the uh, Christmas lights on at a hotel. But this has overshadowed that. <laughs> this has overshadowed that. <laughs> if I can come in and like turn the lights on that turn cheese on, plant, yeah, mate, whack it on. <laughs> <laughs> this year coming <laughs> for your for your. Tell me about the opportunity that arose for you when you went out and saw the drug cartels in South America. So, yeah, so that's an opportunity from SAS, really. You know, you get you get splashed on telly. Someone sees you and thinks he would be good for this idea. Yeah. So I got asked if I wanted to be a part of something. Initially, it was called Miami Vice. Was it? It's, it's just a working title where yeah. they thought, right, where you know, let's get him out to Miami and mix with all the shady characters yeah. out there and see the police and you know, sounded cool. Mm. I was like, yeah, cool. And then it changed. And it was like. Fly me out to South and Central America and properly going deep into it, and it was properly. Did you, you go know, into the underbelly of it. Yeah. We, what were the three? What were the countries you went to? Peru, Colombia, and Mexico. Wow. It was Peru was first, and it was you know that was the roughest. As in, we we flew into Lima. I remember having a nice hotel in Lima for about one or two nights, and then we did this drive down in down to the Vrame Valley. It was a fucking long drive. Yeah. Well, no, there's, there's loads of bits cut out, actually. We flew from Peru to a place called Ayacucho, where we met a, uh, a, a groomer that groomed young travellers to mule cocaine. Yeah. Fucking dark. But Ayacucho's like a party town. Yeah. It's like on the start of the Inca Trail. Flew in there, did some... That, that whole thing didn't make it. We did a scene in Lima... With a girl that had just come out of fucking prison from from muling, she did ten years in a Peruvian oh. nick, and it's Aussie girl. She fuck it, mate. It was fucking all these things, and they never made it into the show. Yeah. Like the girl, she, her story was brutal. Her name was fuck. <sighs> Can't remember her first name now. English. It might, might be English. Bronwyn. Yeah, well, she's Aussie. Aussie, okay. But she basically had a kid when she was young in Oz. Uh, woke up one day, it died. Had an absolute meltdown. Decided to go and, um, you know, do good stuff around the world. Travelled to Africa as a bit of a mission, like working for an NGO or a missionary. And she yeah. ended up getting, um, I think she got, a, yeah, and she, caught, and then off the back end of that, she caught AIDS, Ugh. and like her life was fucking. Anyway, she ended up, yeah, muling. She was like, fuck it, nothing to lose, and yeah. then got nicked in Peru carrying a fucking a load of load of cocaine and wow. did, did 10 years in a Peruvian Ugh. prison brutal she just got out she got out when we flew in she'd literally been out like, do you know some of those prisons out there are mixed as well yeah no hers is a female a mixed one. one yeah hers is female um, <sighs> but yeah it was a brutal story what did you what did you notice on the underbelly how, how did you feel when you were flying out there going hold on a minute who's organised this who's going to the underbelly gangs who's going to the cartels who's organised yeah but it? I'm saying like some is it some young Runner going, you know what? No, no, I'll, find she, out. I'll tell you, organize that. My missus, she was, did the, she? she was the story. She did all the fucking, she did a lot of work on that. She actually flew out before we did to go and meet to meet a few people. She was doing some dodgy shit. And to be fair, I was like, oh, you know, she's out there on her own. She went yeah. to one of the Peruvian prisons and all sorts. Fair play. And then once I got out there, we weren't allowed to work together. So she flew, she had to fly back. She was fuming. Why she weren't you allowed to work together? It's like a security risk, apparently. Okay. okay. I think that's fucking yeah. playing it a little bit too soon. Mm. But I, to be fair, I felt better that she wasn't. Mm. And then we, so we did those trips. We did, um, sorry, we did Ayacucho, Lima, Ayacucho, that Kochu. Fucking hell, I probably said it wrong. Someone will fucking hammer me for that. <laughs> and then uh, we went down to, we got to another location. I can't remember where. 
And then from there, we did this epic drive. So we had to drive from this location. It was like 12 hours down into the very valley, like on death roads. Mm. We'd like fucking drop, thousand foot drops fucking on. Oh, <laughs> got down into the Vray where the Vrame is where they make all the cocaine. All the cocaine. Yeah. It's funny. I remember you seeing it. We're going, now we're coming through here. And we have, we're going to meet the cocaine chef. Yeah, yeah. Or like, Jamie Oliver. Yeah, Jamie Oliver. You also <laughs> cocaine chef. The, oh, we're going into man. the cocaine kitchen right now. How mad is it? There was like kilos of cocaine like this. And they said, they're flogging them for 150 quid. Yeah. And but then coming out like, he, hadn't made, he hadn't made it by that stage. Yeah. It was just all these balls that he had Of fucking, like chalk. Yeah. Yeah. Looked like a fucking climbing mm. powder. But he knocked it up there and then, and then we got fucking rumbled. There was like, because we, we're white guys. Yeah. How many of you? Me, uh, four of us. Just with what, one, with two of them with cameras, one with a camera and yourself? Yeah. Me, Aldo. The cameraman and the director. So uh, who's going in going, I'm here. Here's our celebrity from England. Here he is, Foxy. Turn up. How are you doing, mate? Just, how did it work? You have a fixer. They yeah. link you up. So we we drove at night through the night. Well, not through the night, but early. Yeah. We got out of one vehicle into another one, got to this place. And they're, they're, the, the chef and his flunky were sketched out. Yeah. They're like, fucking. Yeah. Because they knew that any other Peruvians that knew we were there they would fucking potentially get fucking killed. Yeah. But we, there was people were fucking, as the light was coming up, because we thought that we were going to be there, do the stuff, and then we'd and have out. to wait there until dark. Mm. And then it was, as the light came up, people were cutting around in the jungle. So we're in the fucking jungle. It's in the, right in the mix in the jungle, yeah. is it? The Vray Valley's in the middle of nowhere, mate. It's like villages and towns that were just rough as, we were, the place we were staying in, I think it was called San Francisco. <laughs> I had a red bridge over the fucking yeah. <laughs> river as well. Was, but the place we were standing was this this hostel. Mate, it was fucking depressing. We walked in like depressing. The route is shit. There's like bugs and shit everywhere. Oh, my, my shower, to get the shower hot, I had to turn this. There was like an electrical thing. The water ran through with like bare wires. And I was like, <laughs> for a shot, hot shower, I'm going to get electrocuted. Yeah, I fucking, fucking know. I'll have a cold one. <laughs> Did you get the fear at all? What fear, though? No, what I'm saying is the fear. You've been in at war. You've now come in and going, you know what? I'm going into the mix of these drugs cartels. It must have been a point where you're not carrying anything. You know they're going to be carrying. I was fucking scared, yeah. yeah. But I felt confident. I was in a better place then. I felt confident we could. I know I'm okay at chatting to people. Yeah. And I'm genuinely there not to fucking look down. Like They're in a fucking shit yeah. situation. You know, came back and spoke to, you know, spoke openly about the fact that they're just, they're victims. They are victims. Yeah. They're born in a place that doesn't give a fuck about them. And everyone's like, they're in, they're in the drugs world. They're all, so I'm yeah. like, no, they're, they're not, not. No, they ain't got, they ain't got, they haven't a got a clue. They don't know what's going on, on the other side of the world. And to be fair, Agreed. a lot of those business, a lot of those countries, I would suggest that the governments are glad that the cartels are there propping up those communities because yeah. it's sort means they can skim a bit more off the top. Yeah. So they don't have to pump it into that mm. part of the world. What? I'm being cynical. Then, no, I hear but. you. No, I hear you. What was the What's the benefit of them? How much were they getting paid? Like your missus, your wife's gone out there and gone. You know what? There's five what? grand on the table I or not. I don't know how that works. No, okay. And I don't because you they've you've got to be very careful when it comes to. I don't think you're allowed to pay people who are nefarious. You must. You got to pay. Them. What are they going to do? It there for? is. There's going to be They're something. Covered up there's anyway. going to be. What? There's going to be something involved. But I don't know what. I genuinely don't. I okay. don't want to know. That's, yeah, okay. that's fucking. As someone that's front of the camera, that's not my. That's not your. I thing. don't want. I don't need that knowledge. Yeah. The only. I mean, it got sketchy in, in Mexico. We had a hit put out on us, and we had to fucking do a bit of a fucking. Really dodgy deal. Yeah, I was fucking. Mate, there you go. There's five grand. Leave yeah, us alone. Yeah, that was fucking. <laughs> what happened there? Oh, there was a little bit of a mix-up, bit miscommunication. Cartel thought we were doing one thing, we weren't. We were doing it you know, else, somewhere elsewhere with the cartel, and they basically said they wasted their time. Sent a couple of hitmen round to the hotel we're staying in, in Kulikan. We weren't there. Fortunately, we were up in the fucking. We spent the night, spent a couple of nights with the fucking heroin farmers up on the up in the Golden Triangle, up in the hills. Got wind through the fix. It was like fucking hell. They've just. And we're like, what the fuck? Hang yeah. on a minute. Hang on. Hang on. It all got calmed down, ended up fucking doing the old brown envelope. Yeah. Take drop it. off in a fucking pizza bar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there was like fucking there was like some weird like code word to London. Yeah. 
extra pepperoni meant to fucking everything's all going we're alive. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's you. What was the what was the so Peru, Mexico and the other one? Colombia. Colombia. What's color what's the difference between those three, would you say? Right. So Peru is the right, it's responsible for, it's at the bottom of the chain. Yeah. They, they that's where they make it yeah. really. They make it everywhere else, yeah. but and it's like, yeah, it's dangerous, but it never felt like it was gonna proper kick off. Mm. It'd be like farmers. Okay. Ah, freaking, yeah. you know, like a fucking like the peasants' revolt back in yeah. the, you know what I mean? Yeah. Fucking, uh, Colombia is fucking. There's a very sketchy atmosphere because the cartels have been doing it for your, your decades. You know they've got a long history of warring over drugs. The, you know the war is being fought technically by sophisticated forces. Yeah. You know funded and supported by the Western yeah. world, America, Britain, mm. to a certain degree, and. Yeah, there's a very sketchy atmosphere. And weirdly, through, like we saw drugs in Peru. We saw no drugs in Colombia. We were close to it. We were close to them. Mm. But they, you know, the, the people that work within it out there are fucking very, very apprehensive. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it, yeah, it was sketchy. But it was, you know, we went into a barrio in um, Buenaventura, which is a fucking dangerous place for mm. For anyone that is, well, it's a dangerous place for anyone. Went in there, and I've spoken to people since that know about that place from like the law enforcement side, people that, you know, the Colombian authorities, and they're like, you went where? Yeah. They're like, we don't, we don't even send our own people in mm. there. And we're like, yeah, we were there, and it was fucking sketch. And I was like looking at fucking roots out of if it kicked off, but we, you know, we fucking came away from it. But then, so it's very sketchy. Mexico. We saw lots of drugs again, yeah. But that place is fucking madness, scary. Yeah, that's the scariest. It's fucking scary. Yeah, I remember that that show came out. It did the Channel Four rounds. It then came out in on Netflix, and not long after it came out on Netflix, I I went on holiday to fucking <laughs> to Tulum with my missus, and it seemed like a great idea. Oh, in and, Mexico too. Yeah, in Mexico. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Lovely. We, we landed at Cancun, got off, waiting for baggage, a couple of Mexicans, ah, oh, you there? And I was like, what have I done? And I remember we're driving, we're driving from fucking Cancun down to Tulum to the, the resort. And my missus was like, what's the fucking... And I was just like, looking down all the fucking side streets, I'm like, what have we done? I'm going to get fucking... Why did I come back here? Like completely overreacting, <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I was yeah. like on a. And then we got into the resort, and you're like, ah, oh, yeah. oh, it's like all, all inclusive. Pina you don't Colada even need to leave. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Two pina coladas. I, just, I recovered soon enough. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it was quality. a little bit of a yeah. That's quality. But, but it is dangerous. Where's Where was the bit when you were? Was it in Mexico where you saw a murder happening? You didn't see it happening. You didn't see it happening, but it was filmed. It was and good you went, as. To, you went to the scene. Yeah, that was. Fucking. I saw people running around with guns and stuff. I was like, <clears throat> "Yeah, it didn't translate very well." Part of it, but we turned up at the scene, and there was there was a there was a torso on the floor with no head, arms, or legs, bleeding out, and there was a bag next to it. And then the fuck, it, and it was everyone was on edge. It was like fucking hell. Then the copper emptied the bag, and everything that was missing rolled out, which was fucking hell. It was yeah. like, and that it just happened. Yeah. It, you know, he'd just been dumped. He'd been killed a bit before. Mm. And then as that was all playing out, so everyone's on edge anyway. Mm. There's fucking police and yeah. military there. There was like a, it was like, it sounded like an explosion and gunfire. The other side of the roundabout, it's like a big, you know, it's like the old Liverpool Victoria yeah. roundabout. <laughs> it was like, yeah. boop, boop, it was like yeah. fucking hell. And they, all the military and coppers were running, cocking their fucking, Mm. All mate, wet. and I was more worried about one of them fucking having an accident because mm. that's normally what happens. The irony, it's like someone accidentally yeah. fires his weapon and you catch it up. But it, 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 I thought it was a come on that the cartel had done that, and then they wanted a load of fucking authority there just to tear them up. And then in Mexico, they'll do it. Yeah, they don't care. I mean, there's there's, there's no foot, rules in Mexico. No, there's footage of the cartel shooting up a a, a, a helicopter gunship, and they don't give a yeah. shit. They're mate, they're crazy. Mm. They are crazy. Were you glad to come home after that one? I loved it. the experience was amazing, but I remember we got on that flight. I think it was I think the final you know, the main flight out was from Mexico City. 
and uh, the plane took off. Took off. Seatbelt size went off, and me and Aldo went and found each other, and just like fucking hell, we fucking, <laughs> we've done it, we made it, <laughs> we made it. <laughs> how's your How's your world been since since twenty twenty? Yeah, twenty twenty. The last three four years now. Yeah, good. It's the same same. What, what other different stuff you've been doing? You're still doing the SAS show. That's still going. We do the US one, which is great. Got the US one as well. Yeah, we're doing it in the US. We've done two seasons already. Potentially doing a third this year. Wow. Uh, hopefully, fingers crossed. Um, book, new book coming out in April. Called Embrace the Chaos. Mm, good title. Fifty two tactics to getting through life. I've Don't broken. Know. I broke. I wanted to do something different, so I said to Matt, the guy I write with, and the publishers, I was like, I want to break life down into a pack of cards. So there's four suits, and there's thirteen tactics in each one. I love it. So you got you got um, mission. Yeah. That's when you plan to do something big. Could be anything. Go on an expedition. Yeah. Buy an house. Move all that. Sort of, you know yeah. that sort of planned stuff, which is stressful. Mm. Then there's um, calm. That's the boredom, really. Yeah. When you're not you're sort of you're in a lull, mm. not planned. You know. But the pandemic's a classic example mm. for some people. You know, fuck all going on. Yeah. Then there's chaos. That's the unplanned fucking carnage of life. I love that bit. Yeah, yeah, I, I know. That's I the red the bird bit. Yeah, boom. <laughs> Give me that all so day. You've got the chaos, <laughs> um, and then there's recovery, which is planned. You know, recovery. Yeah. What do you do? How do you deal with it? And me and Matt have looked at other people's take on psychological, you know. Um, methods and that and pull it in it's my favorite book yeah i, bet. I read it uh for the audio a few weeks ago and you do the book and matt does the hard graft yeah. he's fucking making On it, it. make yeah. sense you yeah. know mine's just my i dump and yeah. he fucking but um and i've read you read bits and do yeah happy happy, happy. but then i love the love coming to the audio recording the audio and i read it and say it loud and yeah. I was like I fucking love this book quality I'm really looking forward to it yeah it's how quality. long does that take to read a whole book for you on, on the uh, audio a um, couple of days really three, it's it? three days booked out we did okay. it in two and a bit how many books have you written so far three Mate, this three is now. amazing this, the, the, you're, you, this is amazing yeah everything you've achieved isn't it yeah what about um, both of us obviously you're ambassador for Through Dark they've partnered with us at yeah. Eventful Life's podcast I was, I was with Stas this morning yeah. he said that yeah. he told me because I didn't know actually yeah but that's good yeah it's great Two, yeah. it's perfect fit for both of us there Fruit we go dog. check out Through Dark <laughs> <laughs> bad yeah. um, how's that been for you I just think their clothing's amazing I think Stas awesome. and Louis are two unbelievable guys I love and what them. they've created in the last four or five years is off the charts right yeah I love them I love being with them Around the brand's amazing. I'm I'm pleased to be, you know, a friend of the brand and yeah. ambassador, and I I hope I hope I'll remain so. You know, I'm loyal. I think I've got a reasonably loyal um, pedigree. I I like to think, and I'd love to think that they want me around for a long time. Yeah, but yeah, the kit's awesome. Yeah, it's another level, isn't it? Yeah, it's really good. Yeah, amazing. Tell me about your wife, and you got married this year, or Jules. 2023, Jules. Jules is uh, an amazing person. She's help, She's like the, I say she's a, almost like the final cog in the, mm. my puzzle. Puzzle of mm. fixing. She's supported me. She's put up with some shit and done very well at supporting me. She's a great person. She's also tried to farm me off to faraway places and get killed. I thought she'd bump the old insurance premiums up at one point, but fucking came back. Came she's back. like, shit, shit. <laughs> um, yeah, no, she's awesome. Yeah. She does, she's in TV. She does produce a director. She's Is directed it? a few things, produced an awful lot. She actually produced, a little shout out to her. She produced a show that was on Netflix not long ago called uh, MH370, The Plane That Disappeared. Ah, did she? And that, mate, that was two and a half years she worked on that. And I was privy to her working on that. And she put in a fucking shift. shift. Yeah, mate. So fair play. Massive shout out to Jules. Yeah, big shout out to her there. There was a lot of work that went into that. Yeah. Foxy, we could speak for hours, mate. Oh, no, mate. We could speak yeah. for hours. You know what? I've really loved this. Is it all right? Mate, amazing. <laughs> you, you're like the epitome of eventful lives. 
Well, yeah. And we've just touched the surface. Well, touched the surface. I, I know there's a lot more we could do, maybe a part two later yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, I'd love or to. Something. Yeah. yeah. Mate, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Nice one. Jeez, yeah, mate. mate. Funny. So have I. It's yeah, really fun. good. It's a great setup here as well. Thank you, mate. I thought it was going to be a bit Mickey Mouse, but it's not. <laughs> I'm only joking. I'm Quality. Joking. Hey, Bournemouth Sevens, end of May. We're in. We're in. I think I am actually about. I think I'm coming back from some work. Yeah, mate. But we'll keep in touch. Yeah, yeah. Bournemouth Sevens Festival, to, yeah. end of May, wallop. Carnage. Get on the beers, carnage. Yeah, you're a gentleman. <laughs> the red button <laughs> <wait. Yeah. laughs> But I'm grafting, that's the problem. Yeah, know, you can yeah. <laughs> There we go. Let's check part two. Part two. We're the good. red button. The red button. Revisited. <laughs> Revisited. <laughs> Quality. Cheers, oh, mate. Nice you're a gentleman. Hi, guys. I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. Can you do us a favour and subscribe to the channel? It's totally free and it massively helps our show. Cheers, guys. Bye.